Yeah. <laughs> Scientists have analyzed igneous rocks from lava flows and have determined without a shadow of a doubt that in the Earth's past, there's been numerous magnetic pole shifts, without a doubt. How does this affect people on the planet? Well, judging from past experience, very badly. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters and guests, the pole shifts occur every 6,000 years. And the last one was called the Noah event, and I'll explain why later on in my speech. Before, after it was called the Noah event, they changed it to the China event, based on lava flows that occurred in China. And then they gave it a more specific name, the Tianxi excursion. And all of these excursions have been listed in order every 6,000 years. Feel free to pass these around. And each excursion results in extreme radiation, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, tidal waves, and floods. To put it bluntly, extinction level events. And the next excursion is expected around 2030 to 2050. Interesting, isn't it? And this is all to do with the magnetic pole shift. So what do the magnetic poles do? So out of the magnetic poles, you get charged particles, which is the Earth's electromagnetic shield. And that's what protects us from the sun's radiation. And without that protection, our planet would be just like Mars. All the water would be evaporated, and everything would be fried. But this electromagnetic radiation uh, shield gives us protection and allows life to exist. However, Recently, it's been moving and, and reducing in its um, capacity to protect us by about 10%. And interestingly, the magnetic shield, it protects us from the sun's radiation. The sun's radiation is directly connected to what happens below the crust in the earth. So if you get electromagnetic radiation coming through from the sun, you get more earthquakes and you get more volcanic activity just like Mount Etna erupted a couple of days ago. Now I first realized that the poles were moving, the magnetic poles have been moving all the time. And I first realized they were moving when I was in the army back in the late 80s, early 90s. So we had to add this variation to our map reading. Grid to mag, add. Mag to grid, get rid. So that's how you apply the magnetic variation. And back in the late 80s, it was moving at about eight kilometers a year. This is now increased to 55 kilometers a year, heading from where it used to be above Canada towards Siberia. It's accelerating. And as it accelerates, we've lost about 10% of this protection that we have against the sun. And what this has resulted in is magnetic anomalies. You should look up the South Atlantic anomaly, which is just a big hole in this protected, protected layer. And it's actually splitting and growing into two holes. If satellites pass over this anomaly, they have to be shut down because they will, uh, it will fry all the electrics. So it's quite serious. We're also getting record storm events and we're getting oral records. So this is where we see our electromagnetic shield when you, you have the aurora borealis or the aurora austrius. Now we're getting records because they're happening further and further away from the poles which is a sign of the weakening of this protective layer. Just the other day in Jaroa, you could see the aura. And it was a red color. And everyone's saying, wow, this is a great, you know, look at it, it's beautiful. The fact that we can see it and the fact that it's red, if, it if you believe the scientist, is a bad sign. Another thing that's been happening are grid outages, power outages. You might have heard that Spain and Portugal recently were just completely knocked out of power. The whole country, gone. That was because a solar flare got through the weakened protective magnetic shield and it knocked out the power grids. And it wasn't even a big solar flare. So these are all warning signs. Now, when the pole shift occurs, it's quite interesting. If you look at the past and you look at what the scientists are saying, these things that I'm talking about, all these symptoms are going to get worse. You're going to get more volcanic 
activity, you're going to get more blackouts, and, you get, and these anomalies are going to increase in size. And then if you go on what the scientists have said in the past, the speeding up of the pole shift, it will happen to a point where it all of a sudden just goes. That is why the last event was called the Noah event. If you put a fish tank on a table and move it very quickly to the left or the right, where do you think the water goes? It sloshes up the sides. And during the Noah event 6,000 years ago, the Tianchi excursion, all the land masses around were absolutely swamped with water. Noah, from Noah's, Noah's Ark, was a, it was a biblical story. But the great flood was also in the um, Indian scriptures. In fact, all the scriptures, which we should take note of. Now, when it occurs, and, and if it occurs like it did in the past, and I'm not saying it will, there'll be 90% of the population are likely to be decimated by this event. But not only that, those that survive will have a pretty bleak future. Because think about it. Birds, marine life, insects all rely on the magnetic poles being in a certain direction. If those poles shift, their feeding routines, their migratory patterns are all knocked out. So we'll have huge species loss. For humans, it's also pretty significant. There'll be no power. Because if the solar irradiation comes through after the pole shift, we'll be left with 10% of our protection. So there'll be just radiation all around the planet. So there'll be no Teslas, there'll be no solar panels, there'll be no fridges, there'll be no internet, no mobile phones, no power at all. There'll be a complete reset if it happens as these scientists are saying it's going to happen. So it's an interesting theory. And the worst place to live is on the coast, unfortunately. Because if this does happen the way that the scientists have predicted that it might, you need to be at least two hours from the coast and at least 500 meters above sea level to avoid the potential tsunami. And you don't want to be living anywhere near a fault line either. It may be that the safest place to live would be underground. And there is evidence of humans living underground in the past in places like America, India, and so on. So, a light and fluffy subject. What a time to be alive, right at the end of a 6,000 year disaster cycle, if you believe the science. <laughs>